one of the top players in the nation in the class of 2023, five-star defensive lineman Peter Woods just dropped his top four. And this is a top four we need to talk about because he's going to be of massive importance to a lot of these institutions and we need to break down the battle. But before we do, as always, y'all know the drill. I want to hear from you. Hop down to the comments, Y for yes, N for no. And given that Peter Woods is an Alabama kid, do you believe that Nick Saban and the Crimson Tide will be successful in keeping him home? And let me know what you're thinking. If you are new to the channel, be sure to subscribe, hit that bell notification. I do constant college football content. You don't want to miss any of it. And if you enjoyed the content, like and comment down below as those interactions, those small are really massive in content creators getting picked up and maintained by the YouTube algorithm. But with all that being said, let's hop right into this. And before we hop into this, we need to name the top four being the Alabama Crimson Tide, the Oklahoma Sooners, the Florida Gators, and the Clemson Tigers. And we need to break this down because there's a lot of intriguing elements elements surrounding this recruitment process and we can start with Clemson and in general I'm interested in Clemson this year what they do on the football field what they do in recruiting because they lost a lot of firepower in assistant coaches with Brent Venables Todd Bates Miguel Chavez Ted Roof there's a lot of names that Clemson lost and I'm very interested to see how they recover ultimately at the end of the day though I don't contend that Clemson's going to fall off a cliff look Dabo Sweeney has been able to establish some special and whenever a head coach is able to establish something like that so long as the head coach remains there's a certain level of faith that he's earned for us to have inside his program so I do think Clemson is a program to watch because I am curious to see how they handle this turnover it's not something we've seen Dabo have to do at this degree yet but at the end of the day like I said whenever we're talking about the Tigers They've established something that's lasting there, and because of that, Dabo Sweeney earns the benefit of the doubt going into this season. And look, at the end of the day, you're talking about a five-star defensive lineman who, even though Todd Bates is no longer there, even though Brent Venables is no longer there, still has Clemson in his top four, and I think that says something in itself. So... The Tigers are one we have to watch. But now we can talk about where all those assistant coaches went because it's not every day that an institution is in the position Oklahoma is in and it makes it a bit of a unique one. Because Oklahoma is the beneficiary of relationships that were started elsewhere but now get to be transitioned to the Sooners and be built upon there. And Todd Bates is someone we've talked about at length as being a great recruiter, a great defensive line coach, and his relationships within the state of Alabama being from the state of Alabama are ones that could prove pertinent in this battle because Peter Woods is from the state of Alabama as well. So if your defensive line coach is one that's historically recruited well, that's a good defensive line coach to boot and they have relationships in the state in which you're trying to recruit a kid out of you like your chances and the fact that Oklahoma was named in the top four based on the relationships that Peter Wood had established with those assistant coaches when they were at Clemson I think says something in and of itself something we're going to have to watch but now we need to go and talk about the two remaining schools both of which in the SEC and we'll start with the Florida Gators because Florida is generating buzz on the recruiting trail and it's not just in this top four we've seen Florida be included before and I'm very interested in what Billy Napier is going to be able to do with his entrance into the SEC but whenever you're breaking this down one thing we need to look at is for the Florida Gators right now what's interesting to me is per 24-7 sports Sean Spencer is credited with being the primary recruiter for Peter Woods What's interesting about that is he was the primary recruiter for none other than Micah Parsons when Penn State was able to win that battle. So this is someone who has won battles for top tier talent in the nation before and that goes without saying that he's accustomed to being able to do this. Now he finds himself in the SEC where let's be honest SEC fans take their football incredibly serious and Florida in particular is wanting to put together a coaching staff that can go out and win these battles and one of the things we've talked about in regards to the Florida Gators as well as Miami is it is going to be unbelievably important for them to be able to lock up their state however that does not mean you cannot go to another state and get a kid such as Peter Woods in fact it would be a double victory for the Florida Gators the fact that they're able to get in a five-star and the fact that they're able to get a five-star out of the state of Alabama that the Crimson Tide 
I desperately want. And so because of that, and because Florida is generating some level of buzz on the recruiting trail, they are an institution to watch. And in no way am I saying they're about to take over college football and have the number one recruiting class in the nation. However, what I am saying is they're generating a level of buzz right now and it demands our attention. But now it's interesting to see how they're going to be able to transition the hype that they have in the preseason to something tangible moving forward. Because it's perfectly fine to recruit off of hype right now, but that needs to be changed into something tangible once the season arrives, and that's ultimately what I'm really interested in with the Florida Gators. And finally, my Crimson Tide. And look, the Crimson Tide have Peter Woods as a very high priority in this class. The defensive line class in the state of Alabama is incredibly talented this year, but Peter Woods is a guy that they want desperately. And he comes from a high school that Alabama has been able to win multiple battles of in the past. Jeremiah Alexander, a five-star edge rusher out of the last cycle, was someone that Alabama Alabama was able to get in and because of that Alabama is familiar with recruiting this high school on top of that they have the ability to say to Peter Woods hey we've got friends of yours on this team that you played high school football with and a former five-star himself Jeremiah Alexander which in my opinion could be a powerful recruiting tool. One of the things we also need to talk about in terms of Alabama is whenever we talk about Todd Bates for Oklahoma and we give him the accolades of being a great recruiter and a great coach, which he absolutely is. There is no taking away facts from Todd Bates, but every accolade we give Todd Bates, we can give to Freddie Roach. He is a phenomenal recruiter. He is a phenomenal defensive line coach, and the Crimson Tide has been the mecca of development in college football. And if you don't believe me, just look at development rates whenever college football includes Alabama, and then when you remove Alabama, watch that number drop drastically. And then even the other day, ESPN put out a stat talking about the amount of people that have been drafted in the first round since the Nick Saban era, comparing Alabama to other institutions. And if I'm not mistaken, the next closest was 15 picks behind the Crimson Tide, just going to show how crazy this Nick Saban run has been. So what do the Crimson Tide have going for them? Well, this is multifaceted because one, they're the home school. The Alabama Crimson Tide get the benefit of being familiar with recruiting Thompson High School. They get the benefit of having friends of Peter Woods on the team already. And at the end of the day, they have a development rate that just simply cannot be rivaled in college football right now. They have a rate of sending guys to the NFL that is just astronomical on top of being a team that's ready now. And those are all enticing offers to a defensive lineman such as Peter Woods. The fact that Alabama has been on him for as long as they have and that he's such a priority leads me to believe that the Crimson Tide feel very, very confident about where they are right now in the battle for Peter Woods. And finally, if you're asking me where I ultimately think he goes, I think this is going to be a process we need to keep an eye on. But at the end of the day, I do think he goes to Alabama. And for those of you thinking, well, of course you do. You're an Alabama fan and that's a homer take. You're not completely wrong. And I'll give you that. I am an Alabama fan. And because of that, I hang my Alabama stuff in the background to show my bias on the forefront. That way you can get an understanding of why I believe some of the things I believe. However, I also try and be as objective as possible. And one thing we can say with full certainty is that what Nick Saban and Alabama have created is something that's very unique. Y'all know me. I love recruiting. It's my absolute favorite part of college football. It's part of the reason I became so enamored with college football because the hope it creates not only for the individuals and their families in the recruiting process, but for the kids and those in the town that are watching this, giving an innate belief that there's something larger for them as well. And that's my favorite absolute favorite thing about college football because of that i can't wait to hear from you hop down to the comments if you disagree with me and you think that he's headed to one of the other three schools absolutely let me know and let me know why we can talk about it in the comments down below i love conversing with y'all but with that thank you so much for clicking on the video thank you for watching it That's it. see ya